Hey guys, Andre from Beefy Techie here with a video showing you how to set up Coco Split. But first, check out this funny YouTuber. I don't have my phone and my mom needs to pick me up, so can I use your phone? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, thank you so much. <gasps> Go ahead and click on the link in the description below, like him on Facebook, and check out his channel for more Fuzzy Tube Madness. Hey guys, what's up? It's Andre from Beefutechie here to show you guys a quick rundown of this lovely application I found called Coco Split. Now, Coco Split to many that use Adobe FMLE, a lot of you guys will pretty much be very satisfied to see that this actually uses a far less amount of CPU rather than its counterpart Adobe FMLE. It too is also free available on the internet. I will post a link for where you can actually get it from directly from the source because he's constantly updating it from time to time with new features. Now when you do first download Coco Split and open it you will basically notice that a lot of these these areas are pretty much blank and empty. They have nothing in it. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to first set up your Twitch string, string key so that this way you can pretty much test all the different settings. So you're going to click on this drop down, go to Twitch TV, go to add, and then you're going to select your server. Select whichever server you want to use, whichever server you were using before. You don't have to fill it in like you did with Adobe FMLE. You have to figure out what server is what and this is that. You just pick which one. You pick one, you put in your stream, your stream key here, you click add, and it's going to come up here, and the active checkbox is going to be there. Now, you can always rename them here, so that this way you know which one. If you have multiple channels, you can do that there, and you'll know which one is which. Now, under the video settings, you can change the different things. For this purpose, we're going to leave it at QT Capture. If it's not a QT Capture, put it at QT Capture and then you're going to select your value as camp twist. Now down here you're it's going to be set to none. You're going to want to use X264 as that means there, helps you meet the requirements of Twitch. But that's not all you have to do. You have to click the gear and you also have to fill in these here because they're all going to be blank. For preset I suggest using super fast or very fast. For tune leave it blank. For profile use any of the highs and you'll be fine. For variable vi for valuable bit uh, for the max rate, you're gonna want to use fit you're gonna want to use whatever it is that you normally stream at. For the buffer, I always go 300 higher, so you'll see my max rate at 5500 and my buffer at 5800. For keyframes, again, to meet the requirements, there have to be two keyframes every. There has to be a keyframe every two seconds. For CRF, it has to be two, and once again, to meet the requirements, we have to use CBR mode. So you're going to check to use CBR mode, and then that's that. For resolution, you're going to fill in whatever it is that you want to stream at. If you want to stream at 1280 by 720, go ahead. If you want to stream at 480, which is 854 by 480, that's fine too. 768 by 432, that too is fine. Whatever you want to stream at, you put in those numbers there, as long as people can see it, they'll be happy. For FPS, you put in whatever frames per second you want to use. Um, I normally stream at 60. You could do 5994, 2997, 30, 24, 25, whatever frames per second you want to do, go ahead. For audio, this is pretty much self-explanatory. You pick your audio, you, suck your, you type in your bit rate, which is 128. For me, I use 120. You can use 96, but from what I understand, you can't go higher than 160, I believe. And for the sample rate, 44, 100, which is basically near studio quality. Okay, so once all of that's pretty much said and done, you know, you have your status area. Now, because I don't have any capture devices connected, I'm going to open up Cam Twist. Well, I didn't even need to do that. We could have just did the static image. We're not even going to open up Cam Twist. I already have a version running to do this recording. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit stream. And all we're going to do is show the static image. Now, as you can see, 
FPS and F FPS in FPS out are gonna you know go up and down up and down based on what's going on okay now as you can see in the status you have the name of the sir whatever you named it because this is beefy techie is going to the main beefy techie tells you how many frames per second is coming in from can twist it tells you how many frames per second is coming out from coco split it tells you how many is pending out now the pending out if you see it starting to go up higher like 160 and that's not drops what is basically doing it's caching those to actually send it out when you do have drop frames it's actually going to show up here which is the lovely part of this program it will show you the drop frame because I actually had a moment where I dropped over 250 and that's the locally and it's basically because your CPU is being used all the way up because I set it to placebo one time and I just tested it but that's neither here nor there now I'm gonna go back into settings and everything else I'm gonna stop and everything should be fine okay now like I said there are times where this will crash at the end of a stream sometimes it's okay it's just something that is within the program that it just happens now mind you it does not happen while you're streaming it only happens at once you stop the stream and it'll actually stop when you say stop but that was the complete rundown of Coco Split. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on here. Hit me up on Twitter. I'll answer whatever questions you may have. Thank you.